Hi, we are the Haggerty family, um, and we've been coming to the church for a very long time, ever since my mother went to a benefit concert at SPSA for Darfur. After the concert, she told me it was exactly the kind of church that I would love to get involved with, and she was right. I went to my first service, I immediately signed up to be a part of the choir, um, and shortly after got involved in what is our favorite part of the church year. Finn, what is our favorite thing to do at the church? Do the church. The church what? The church pageant. The church pageant is our favorite event that we get to be part of. Mom directs, the rest of the family gets to be in it. And what else do we do at the church? Sunday school. Sunday school. Sunday school, which is now known as Kids Connect. And those are our favorite parts of church, right Finn? Yes. Please join us in the call to worship. God so loved the world that God gave a most beloved child. So that everyone who believes that child may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send this child into the world to condemn the world. But in order that with Christ, the world might be saved. The light has come into the world but we lurk in the shadows. The light has come into the world. But we are not always ready to live in the light. But when we do what is true, we come into the light so that everyone can see that what we do is done in the spirit of God. For God loved this world of ours so much. That God gave us this most precious gift. Give thanks, thanks for our precious Redeemer. Every promise we can make, every prayer and step of faith, every difference we only by God's grace. Every mountain we will climb, every ray of hope we shine, every blessing left behind is only by God's grace. Grace alone which God supplies, strength and teach everywhere we share the peace is only by God's grace every loving word we say every tear we wipe away every sorrow turn to praise is only by God's grace grace alone which God supplies, strength and all God will provide. Christ in us, our cornerstone, we will go forth in grace alone. Grace alone, which God supplies, strength and all God will provide. Christ in us, our cornerstone. Will you pray with me? Holy One, we come this morning to celebrate the extraordinary love of God. It is a love that reaches through the shadows of our lives to embrace us. It is a love more powerful than we can imagine, stronger than our greatest fears. It is a love that can change the world and in the meantime change us too. 
Help us, God, to believe ourselves beloved and to return the blessing by the way we love others. Bless this time of worship. May it revive our souls and strengthen our faith in your steadfast love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. scriptures this morning is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor they came out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people and they bit the people, so many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look upon it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus, Savior, Lord, go to thee. I fly, Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. The rock, my refuge, that's higher than I, Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. In the midst of foes, I cry to thee from the ends of earth, wherever I may be. My strength in helplessness, O oh, answer me. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Jesus, Savior, Lord, Lord, to Thee I fly. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Now the rock, my refuge, that's higher than I. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. In Thy tent, make me Thy dwelling place, and me my wings there I find sheltering grace. O oh, lift on me the sunshine of thy face. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Jesus, Savior, Lord, who to thee I fly. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Though the rock, my refuge, that's higher than I. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Good afternoon, I'm Reverend Dr. Vanessa Brown, and I am the senior pastor of Rivers of Living Water, United Church of Christ, and I am here to bring you the scripture for this morning. Today's lesson is from John chapter 3, and includes the famous verse, God so loved the world, but there is more to it than that. Listen for the word of the Lord. John 3, verses 14 through 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the human one be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that God gave an only child, so that everyone who believes him 
may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are judged by themselves because they have not trusted in the name of the only Son of God. And here is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people love the shadows rather than the light because their deeds were selfish. For all who do what they know is wrong hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus, Savior, Lord, Lord, to Thee I fly, Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. The rock, my refuge, that's higher than I, Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Oh, that I may pass through Thee, may pay, and that my, my faithfulness to me each day, believe in all That's higher than I, Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Yesterday, today, forever the same, though the heritage of all who bear thy name, to ransom them from sin, the Savior came, Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Jesus, Savior, Lord, go to thee I fly. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Thou the rock, my refuge, that's higher than I. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. The Reverend J. Terry Todd perhaps needs a little introduction around here. You may know him as the uh, beloved professor of American Religious Studies across the river at Drew University. And you may remember that he is uh, on the pastoral staff of Rivers of Living Water, our well-loved sister congregation here at St. Paul and St. Andrew, a congregation with whom we share this building when it's possible to share the building. And in that capacity, a few years back on Ash Wednesday, Terry brought us the idea of glitter ash of mixing glitter in with the ashes that we impose on each other as we repent of our sins and shortcomings, reminding us also that God brings us always a word of affirmation and love and acceptance. I'm eager to hear what Terry has to say to us, so let's listen for Lent and a word from God through the Reverend Dr. J. Terry Todd. Some Christian communities observe today, the fourth Sunday in Lent, as refreshment Sunday. We're 21 days uh, this side of Easter, and today is set aside as a brief pause in an otherwise somber season. At Ash Wednesday, we were smudged with the sign of the cross And even though we've long ago scrubbed that mark off our foreheads, our bodies still carry the cross's shadow as we continue our walk through the wilderness. But today, on Refreshment Sunday, at least among our Catholic and Anglican and Lutheran beloveds, Their morning worship begins with a glimmer of hope and happiness for the city. Our cities, I'd like to think, that await salvation. 
So there Introit begins, rejoice. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for the city, all you who delight in Jerusalem. Sing, sing with joy, all who are in sadness, all who are in mourning, rejoice. Yet wouldn't you know, despite the reminder to sing for joy from the oasis of Refreshment Sunday, the appointed scripture readings lead us quickly back into the desert, into the wilderness where we've spent Lent. The place and time where, as I've heard more than once, I felt like I've spent a year-long Lent. Do we really have to do Lent this year? And so the scripture takes us back and says, yes, back to the place where we hear the sound of snakes hissing. Today's Hebrew Bible reading from the book of Numbers puts us close to the end of the Israelites' 40-year wandering in the desert. It's been a long time. But the people haven't reached their promised land, not yet. They've been forced to take another detour. And so they are driven back into the desert. I can only imagine the frustration. One translation of the passage says, the people grew impatient with the long journey. Or for me, the more poignant translation comes from the King James Version, which renders it, the soul of the people was much discouraged. How is it with your soul these days? Has it been much discouraged, not only in these weeks of Lent, but all through the long shadow time of COVID. The pandemic has hit our church, rivers of living water, really hard, with some losses in the community and then many losses just beyond that community of aunties and uncles and friends and cousins and grandparents and mothers and fathers These have been trying times. The soul of the people was much discouraged. Even for those of us privileged enough to to have remained in good health and to work from home, these have been trying times. The soul of the people has been much discouraged. God's people have complained before, wondering why God had brought them up out of Egypt, only to have them die in the wilderness. This time, today's reading from the book of Numbers, is the last of the Torah's murmuring stories. The complaints are about food. How many more times can I eat this manna? It's about the water. God has provided here to four, but right now there is nothing to drink, not a drop in this wilderness. We're hungry, Lord. We're thirsty, Lord. We've had enough. When can we get back to normal, even if normal is simply what we have known rather than what possibilities lay ahead? As the story goes, God is fed up with the complaining and unleashes a scary and spectacular punishment. Poisonous snakes arise and many of the wilderness refugees die from snake bites. They cry out to Moses, okay, we get it, we get it, Uh, we've sinned. God then instructs Moses to craft up bronze fiery snake to put it up on a standard, a flagpole, and say to the people, whoever is bitten can look at it and live. Really? 
Can't I stay in our wilderness oasis this refreshment Sunday? Rather than live in a nightmarish biblical version of Wesley Snipes' B-movie, Snakes on a Plane. No disrespect to snakes, because I know they're a vital part of the biosphere. And no disrespect to Wesley Snipes, and no disrespect to fans of the House of Slytherin. But this is a creepy story. This narrative of Moses and the bronze serpent has always vexed Christian and Jewish interpreters. Did God really call the serpents up as punishment? Or did God simply withdraw God's protection, allowing the snakes to do their thing, to attack the human intruders? What kind of vengeful and merciless God would unleash poisonous snakes just because of my ingratitude and desire to make it safely home. One ancient Jewish sage declared this the meaning of the story. It wasn't the serpent that held the power of death and life, but rather God. And, and I quote him, as Israel lifted their eyes and gazed upward, they would submit their hearts to God, and this would bring about their cure. That is, trust in God, not faith in the emblem itself would bring about the cure. We've encountered, some of us more so than others, the poisonous snakes in this wilderness we've traversed, the snake of a pandemic that has taken 2.5 million lives around the globe. The snakes that were there long before the pandemic, but now visible to us, even to those who once shielded our eyes and pretended not to notice. The snake of racism and state-sponsored violence. The snake of self-hatred and despair. The snake of food insecurity, of unemployment, of poor access to health care, of estranged families and friends, the snake of self-interest, the snake of environmental degradation. Where is the healing, Lord? Is there healing in the wilderness? Lord, I lift up my eyes and we lift up our hearts. Because they were Jews, Jesus and the earliest Christians knew well this Torah passage about Moses and the bronze snake, and it's no surprise that the story is cited in John's Gospel in the course of a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, a rabbi. Nicodemus, you might recall from other Gospel readings, recognized that Jesus was a teacher sent from God, but Nicodemus, like a lot of us, like, like me, Nicodemus was puzzled by some of Jesus' teachings, especially that requirement to be born again of water and the Spirit if we are to enter the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, God's realm that is breaking in even at this moment. In the course of that conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus utters a prophecy about himself. And it's one that Nicodemus and probably all of Jesus' friends simply don't yet get. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the human one, Jesus is speaking of himself there, so must the human one be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. There's the parallel between the healing sign in the desert, that bronze serpent, and the cross that casts its shadow over Jesus' future. The cross, an instrument of state-sponsored death at the hands of imperial Rome, that is strangely transformed into an unlikely emblem of healing 
We will see, Jesus seems to suggest, that his execution on the cross is a sign of love for and solidarity with humanity, not a sign of punishment. Beloved, we're not out of the wilderness yet. COVID is not yet done with our world. Racism and state-sponsored violence have not yet been vanquished. Voting rights are still under attack. And the multiracial, multi-ethnic, and multi-religious democracy that so many of us long for is still struggling to be born. In this all too lengthy Lenten season, we still walk through lonesome valleys, through the pain and heartache of illness, of loneliness, of boredom, and even of fear. During this day-long pause in our Lenten wandering, we must find a way by God's grace to hold it all. The mournfulness, the anger, the complaining, the fear and the uncertainty, the crosses shadow, and the sounds of a distant rejoicing. Along with our sad and mournful hymns, can we hear a call to joy, however faint, as God promises salvation to the city. Rejoice, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for the city. All you who delight in Jerusalem, sing, sing with joy. As God, as John's gospel recounts, Jesus tells Nicodemus, God did not send God's child into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God so loves the world that we will not perish, but have everlasting life. Trust. The term is often rendered belief, as if assent to a set of propositions is salvation. Do you believe in God? Check. Do you believe in Jesus Christ his son? Check. Do you believe in the church? Check. But belief is not trust. To trust that God is at work here, in this community, at St. Paul's and St. Andrew's, at rivers of living water, at communities all over the Upper West Side, throughout our city, throughout our state, throughout our nation, and indeed throughout our world, partnering with us, partnering with God to bring about the kingdom. After a long time in the wilderness amongst poisonous snakes, we trust that the snakes do not have the last word, but that salvation is on its way if we look through the emblem of Jesus to witness the love of God. New York, Newark, Los Angeles, New Orleans, Chicago and Miami, Minneapolis and Jerusalem and Gaza City, Manila, and Mumbai, salvation is on the way. Salvation is on its way, you who are weary and are heavy laden. We gaze upon the human one lifted up on the cross, like Moses lifted up that snake in the wilderness, knowing that this snake infestation and this crucifixion is not punishment from a vengeful God, but a promise, a covenant to all snake-building people, the forgotten, the powerful, the neglected, the lowly, the comfortable, the hungry, that salvation is on the way because God will not leave us alone in our struggle. Our standard is not the snake hissing, don't tread on me, not the snake of pretend patriots, but rather the cross of Christ lifted up, finally, as a sign of healing rather than destruction. Friends, 
as we continue in this wilderness together, let us realize that we are mutually dependent on each other as well as on God. I have no salvation without you. And your healing and my healing are as one. Yes, I want Jesus to walk with me. And yet, can we also walk together? Can we walk into a future that we trust will unfold if we are able to find each other to cross our divides and together raise a sign of healing in the wilderness. Amen. I want Jesus to walk with me. Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim journey. Lord, I want Jesus to walk with me. SA friends, it's an honor to Zoom pray with you this very morning. And so we pray to you, you whom we call to in need or in gratitude, you who are our wisdom in the wilderness, in the ancient wilderness, in the contemporary wilderness, we pray for your guidance. We are so easily lost, yet your ways are not always so straight. You lift up a serpent to save us, yet it was through an original serpent that we lost you. Serpents twist around through our wildernesses then and now, swirls of salvation amid spirals of destruction. We plead for discernment. We are in a great collective wilderness now. We are in Lent, commemorating Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness, which was commemorating Israel's 40 years. We have been in Lent for a month, but it feels like we have been there for a year. So much solitude, so much suffering made worse by isolation, so much lonely loss, so much hardship for so many, hardship intensified psychologically and materially, so much injustice exposed. Here on the verge of spring and its hopefulness, 
We pray for your guidance through the rest of this pandemic desert. We don't ask you to fix our plagues, our problems, but we know that you walk with us. We pray for the deeper healing that can come through these sufferings. We pray that new collective insights into how to be people together, how to be a people, even a nation can come. Even the serpents of our lives can be lifted up into your signs, signs of you, our wisdom in the wilderness. And so once again, we all pray together. Our God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Sunday of Lent, which in Methodist land makes it Umcor Sunday. Now, what's an Umcor, you might ask? Well, the United Methodist Committee on Relief has been responding to desperate situations around the world since the end of the Second World War. Closer to home, they uh, were able to give us a sizable grant after 9-11 in order to renovate the downstairs food pantry area to respond to increased numbers of people who were coming to us out of food insecurity. A couple of years ago, UMCOR was able to grant us some, some funds in order to make it possible for Deborah and her family to live in sanctuary in this building of ours. And just last spring, during the economic crisis that happened in the wake of the pandemic, UMCOR once again stepped up gave us a grant in order to enable us to keep the building open and to keep hungry people fed. That all makes me feel very grateful. And in response, I, I want to support UMCOR in their work, the way that we can extend our love, not only out into the street, but around the world. Thank you. God, so
And now, be at peace. Remember, God so loved the world that God gave a beloved child, that God became love to live with us and to teach us how to love the way God loves. As you walk through this wilderness, if there are snakes in your path, remember, love will lift us, will lift us and love us, protect us and guide us. God bless you. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted even me, love lifted even me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Souls in danger look above, Jesus completely saves, he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, Billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be saved today. Love lifted even me, love lifted even me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted even me. Love lifted even me.